There's Bill, Junior, and Nancy, and Lil Dave, and Tessie, and me. Pause. How many people are in this family currently? Show me on your hands. Show me on your hands. How many people are in this family currently? So one of the things I really like about this video with Casey and, and these students, as I watch this, I'm, I'm sort of captivated by the ways she breaks things down for kids, creates alternate pathways, redirects them, asks simple questions like this, seemingly simple questions like, how many members are there in this family? Just, you've got to know that. And I'm seeing different numbers of fingers up around this room. It's not an easy question with the lottery to ask how many family members there are because they're very slow to reveal themselves, even though the story's compact. And so she uses that as I, as, as in this video, Casey uses that simple question as a pathway to go deeper with the kids, and they feel safe going there with her because they've, she's given them this very reasonable staircase to climb on that pathway. And I, I, I think that's repeated over and over again for this video. And that, since I'm passionate about the Common Core being for all kids, that's, I, that really resonates with me when I watch this video, is how, how effectively she, she does that. What Casey also shows is how you can use the Common Core even with a class who might otherwise present you know, your problems of management, et cetera. Um, she's able to, to, to stay so close with the text while at the same time she does things like you know, the show me on your hands, like she's keeping the kids moving. Um, I can tell you that a lot of these kids might pose a management problem but usually don't for Casey because she keeps them engaged in all these various very um, like fun and concrete ways um, even while she's doing something like reading a close reading of one sentence over and over again. So it's not like the Common Core is only applicable for kids who don't propose your range of management problems. If you're using the teaching techniques you've always used, they're always applicable with the Common Core stuff. What kind of irony is it? Is it dramatic, situational, or verbal? Mm -hmm. Discussion of groups, it's what kind like of irony situational. is it? It's situational. It's <laughs> situational. She's screaming out dramatic. It's situational because uh, they didn't expect Mrs. Uh, Hutchison to act like that. Very nicely done. I think that's a great example of the power of vocabulary when you teach it so that the kids actually know it. So irony is probably on the border of a tier two or a tier three word, um, but like the situational and dramatic and verbal are words that you know you don't see every day. And they were able to put it all together, and that's because it was drilled. And then they learned that in a different story, then they had to. Um, to apply it here, so everything was brought together. And when you're doing texts to the level that Casey is, then you can make a connection between them, which means that you understand both better, um, which is something that a reliance on the text will afford you the chance to do. There's also an important point here. A lot of these readers are low-level readers, we know. Um, but uh, the concepts of irony that she's introducing are pretty high-level concepts. and. I've always believed, and I think the Common Core addresses this, that just because a student reads on a first grade level doesn't mean that they don't think on a ninth grade level. That those concepts need to be taught along with the skills. Because if you, if you don't introduce those concepts, those grade level skill concepts, uh, at, their, at their thinking ability, then when are they ever going to get those? Uh, because you're, you're going to be skipping over those uh, because they don't read on a ninth grade level. And the material they can access if left to themselves will never yield that kind of rich harvest of opportunities like the lottery does. As we're talking about the different levels within the classroom, what are your thoughts about you know this classroom being a ninth grade level but um, their reading level maybe below that? Well, one, one, they need to hear the text and read it repeatedly, which I think this lesson, if they're spending a few days on it, is pushing them back in in the search for evidence. One of the techniques that uh, Casey uses in this video that I love, and it's, it's one I do a lot, is at one point Casey is the narrator and she has assigned to kids, and I, I would bet she rotates a lot, we only see a little, but she's reading quite rapidly. The kids have to keep up with her, which means they're forced to follow along with her fluent reading, and then boom, if you're the male that was speaking, then you get your spoken words, and you get your, you, the female spoken words, and however many characters there were, they, had to, they all had to know where they were. And if you do that and rotate, you've got 
at least those six or seven kids who are involved reading along, and if you do rapid fire rotation, you're building fluency in these low level kids quite quickly and efficiently. Since the fluency research is so solid, it is following along while a fluent reader reads or repeated reading of the same text. And both of those are in play during this lesson while Casey is keeping the kids tuned in to the, the, all the implications of this, of this story that she's teaching. The other intriguing thing to, to look at these kids compared to kids who might be more fluent readers and some of whom we saw today in, in Aiden's class, but in any situation, is that they're not only not fluent in their reading, they're not fluent in their language. It takes them a long time to express their thoughts. I don't think there's any deficiency. In, there is no deficiency in their thinking. There is no, it's not that they can't grasp as quickly the concept of ironic, that somehow things flip around in an odd, odd opposite way. It's that they can't express that. And being asked to express it at this grade level, just as at, in, one of, in, in the second grade level, being asked to express difficult ideas, and then being asked, asked to read it, as in the choral reading that, that, that Tim did, those kinds of activities not only develop fluent reading, they develop more fluent language. And, and that, that's a huge difference between kids who are proficient academically and kids who are not. Let me ask a question about the topic of fluency because it is something that is very rich and concentrated in the earlier grade levels. So um, what do you say for you know, the high school teachers or upper grade teachers and as an administrator or um, you know, principals, things like that, if they come in the room and see ninth graders reading aloud a text, is that acceptable? What I would say to a principal or to teachers or to students themselves would all be the same thing. First of all, it has to be named and talked about, and kids have to understand what fluency is. I think as a teacher, I always have that conversation when, I, when I'm teaching high school kids especially, who have some of these struggles and, and are disfluent and know it. Um, I name it for them and I explain it to them. And then one of the really powerful techniques that we've done is you can take a single paragraph. This takes 10 minutes. Read it out loud, kids following. Do, choral, do all that, those same exercises with a single paragraph. And then at the end, ask a couple kids to volunteer to read it. They're going to read it well after 10 minutes. So you can ask the class, did you all become smarter in 10 minutes? Because they think it's an intelligence problem. Or is it a fluency problem? And, is, and do you see how quickly it can be fixed? I think if every teacher could do that early in the year and remind kids of it, and then the kids would follow along. They would understand why. And this is not a hard problem to fix. That's the good news about fluency. The bad news is if we don't address it and principals don't learn to actually push for it instead of wonder why it's going on, we, the Common Core is going to face a singular challenge in its, in its successful implementation just because of the fluency barriers. It has to be addressed. It's really important.